Hey guys, I am one of a handful of people to survive 5,000 days in hardcore Minecraft, and I did it all live on stream. The craziest thing about it isn't just that I transform my world from this to that, or that Phil's a coach me from my first dragon fight, it's that over the course of this journey, I have actually changed as a person and you guys helped me do it. This video tells the story of a Minecrafter's journey, from first playing the game on Xbox 360 back in 2012, to me jumping on a PC almost 8 years later, in 2020, to start this hardcore world that would change my life forever. I streamed the world for the first time on April 1st, 2020, averaging around three viewers who were mostly my cousins. And three streams later, something amazing happened. Something that kickstarted it all. And Filza, I will always be immensely grateful. On April 25th, 2020, I was streaming, minding my own business, getting prepped to fight the dragon, and all of a sudden... I'm on the television! I got raided by Phil Filza, with 3,337 no viewers. I had major social anxiety at the time, and this was I'm a dead. huge shock to me. As you can see from my setup, I had no idea what I was doing, and this was not even my PC. During that stream, Filza and all of chat coached me on everything I needed to get ready for the fight. Okay. Oh my god, I'm getting advice from Phil right now. This is insane. We almost didn't make it due to a couple okay. of close calls. But we powered through. Found it. Accident. I trust you. Obviously. I don't even know what to do. No, I'm keeping the pumpkin. Phil told me to. Okay. Got two. Got three. <gasps> Thank God for that potion. And we managed to successfully beat the Ender Dragon for the first time ever. We did it! That's the first time I've ever done that. Wow. So after this stream, I knew that viewers had seen me, and I did not want to take this opportunity for granted. Although I was working a full-time job and taking four college classes, I streamed seven days a week. It was definitely hectic and the grind was real, but I'm so glad that I did it because now I get to share this journey with so many of you. So we played through the game and I had so many new experiences. I got Elytra, I learned how to fly, we went end busting, I tackled an ocean monument, but I thought it was time to do something big. Inspired by Phil's and Lantis, I wanted to do my own take and work on a massive build that not only motivated me, but hopefully would captivate the audience too. And that is how we started Winter Enderland. We transformed the End Island into a huge frozen wonderland, turning the end into essentially a giant snow globe. Now my math isn't the best, and trying to build the mega dome without any help was tough, but we got there in the end. And I'm not going to lie, I was so happy with how Winter Enderland turned out, but it wasn't all success. After I finished the project, I hit a wall. My self-doubt kicked in, and I struggled to find my purpose. How could I ever build something that could compare to Winter Enderland? I really did not think that I had the potential, drive, or the skill to build something of this caliber ever again. The pressure of trying to figure out what my next big move was was really tough, and these negative thoughts, they not only impacted my streams, but I began to settle for less. I didn't know what else to do. I thought that my worth was purely based on building domes, you know? So it's like, let's build five domes just because that's the only thing that I was like confident about doing. I made builds that I believe could get me through, but nothing that was truly inspiring or anything that I was passionate about. And although this did bring me down for a while, we reached many milestones throughout the game that I was super proud about. After just a few months of streaming, I applied for Twitch partnership. And on August 10th, 2020, we were accepted. And that is when I knew I would do whatever it took to be a full-time content creator. The acceptance definitely revitalized my passion and my creativity sparked again. So I streamed and I streamed and I streamed. We reached 1,000 days, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, and now we are here at 5,000 days. And ready, day 5,000! We hit 5,000! 
Yeah, guys, so we made it today 5,000, which is absolutely insane. Like, okay, let's be honest, let's be honest. Who thought that I would survive this long? <laughs> One of my most challenging but thrilling moments was my first ever subathon. To celebrate a year of streaming, we embarked on a 27 hour stream that resulted in me doing a lot of crazy things. It's McDonald's, Kentucky Fried Chicken and a Pizza Hut. Ready? Oh my God, I actually have hair that is attached to my head. But the best thing that happened was we managed to hit 1,000 subscribers. And as you can see, hitting 1,000 subscribers meant it was time to respawn the Ender Dragon in Winter Enderland. Yeah, you know, the one we just spent five months building? Do it. Oh man, there's one, there's two. My heart is racing. Say goodbye, say goodbye. Nothing happened. Oh, it's happening. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. It's happening. Oh, no. We just take it. Oh. Oh, this is bad. This is really bad. I can't do this fast enough in order for no the damage to be tell taken. A story. <laughs> no regrets. Happy one year. Okay. No. Honestly, didn't give two craps. Okay, I beat it. Oh, my God. Honestly, was it too? So the dragon did do some damage. It honestly wasn't as much as I thought, but the pillars were destroyed, the dome now has holes, and the enderman farm was pretty scuffed. However, it was such an incredible stream, and you can definitely count on me doing more of these in the future. And if you've been here for a while, you've seen my builds come a long way. And look, some still aren't exactly the best, but hey, at least we still have something to work on. You've also seen me have a few too many close calls. 14 close calls to be in fact. You've seen me almost die to creepers. Vexes. The dragon. The void. Fall damage. With the skellies. Darn it, he got me. And probably ow, so much ow, more. Ow. A lot faster just to like. I'm gonna be able to break this and fly out without setting on fire. Nope. I'm gonna make it. Am I gonna make it? <laughs> we made it! <laughs> Throughout the last 5,000 days, we've made some mega builds. Winter Enderland being my favorite. We also transformed an ocean monument in the shape of Australia. I didn't actually intend for this project to be Australia from the start. I just wanted to do an organic shape and it started looking like Australia, so we changed the plan and sort of just rolled with it. Because I spent so much time working on big projects, my base area desperately needed some upgrades. Storage has always been an issue for me, and if you've watched any of my streams, you know that I have chess monsters everywhere. I started with a stonemason hut, which had an auto sorter for every stone item. I collected every trade for the stonemason villagers, which can actually give you every single color of glazed terracotta. One of my goals is to have every possible item acquired by trading obtainable. As the days went on, we added more and more villager huts with trading and storage. The area was finally building up. I know this is crazy, but I would love to collect 64 of every stackable item in the game. Now before you mention me needing a stack of bedrock or a stack of dragon eggs, I only want to get things that are legitimately collectible. This will be really tough. 64 god apples and 64 netherite blocks will not come easy. But I'm up for the challenge. I have so many future plans for this world, like a lot of plans, so make sure you stay tuned. If you've been watching me recently, you know that I've been working on a couple of projects. Our custom mineshaft has been taking a lot of time, but I'm super happy with how it's turning out. I realized that even this late in the game, I didn't have a dedicated mine, so I finally made one, but I had to make it a little extra. I wanted to keep the essence of a natural mineshaft, but I added a few things to make it look a little more presentable. I went with the lush cave vibe and even added in some ores and custom geodes.
It contains toolsmith villages, an automatic storage for all of my ore blocks, I used the spawner that I came across to make a poisonous spider farm. But now, it's time for a big reveal. I have started working on my next mega build. I have been grinding to dig out my nether because I will be transforming it into a huge ocean oasis. I'll have to clear out over 3 million blocks in order to spawn proof and make a wither skeleton farm. And I will be mining it all by hand. I can't have an ocean oasis without an ocean, but that isn't exactly possible in the nether, so we need to get a little creative. No, not that type of creative. I'll be using multiple layers of glass to give the illusion of water. We will surround it by sandy beaches, mountains, and even a prismarine castle. I'm sure there will be many ups and downs, but if there's one thing that I've learned, it's that you just need to believe in yourself. If you give it 110%, you can for sure do something amazing. After all, this wasn't just my journey, it was our journey, and I wouldn't be able to get through it without all of your support. There is lots of progress to be made and loads of fun to be had, so come check it out, because I can't wait to show you everything I have to offer. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys soon.